What's up, everybody? Demon back. Welcome to a brand new video. Today, we're going to be doing another Godzilla the Planet Eater discussion video. Yeah, you guys remember that super weird movie, Godzilla the Planet Eater? It's pretty simple when I break it down. It took me. I think four watches and by the fourth watch, I was like, oh, I get it. Oh, I totally get it. It's seemingly complicated, mostly because the ending is very rushed. But once you understand it, it's actually not that bad. And and it, like I said, it does take multiple watches to really get it, but you figure it out pretty quick on your own. Anyways, you don't even have to do multiple watches in the movie because I'll just break it down for you right here. That's what the point of this video is. Let's jump into it. Yes, by the way, massive spoiler warning for Godzilla the Planet Eater. Sorry, I spoiled it in the title, but no one would click on the video otherwise. Whatever. All right, it's fine. It's fine. Anyone who wanted to watch Planet Eater has already seen it. That's pretty much how it is. I give you two weeks. Before we jump into the actual ending of the movie, let's talk about all the events that led up to it that foreshadowed the ending. I'm not gonna do a plot by plot. I break down a whole bunch of what happens in the plot in my spoiler review, just go watch that. We're gonna talk about the foreshadowing events that specifically lead up to Haruo's sacrifice. We'll start out with Martin because he's kind of the first one we get introduced to in the movie other than, you know, Metfees with his little monologue. Martin explains to us how nature works. He sets everything else up to come. The way the ending happens, he knew it was gonna happen. He pretty much flat out explains it in the beginning scene. Earth is an ecosystem. It is its own living thing and we have tampered with it. All technology developed by mankind has only existed to destroy mankind. We have basically created technology to destroy ourselves and create monsters. This was nature's plan. Humans were never supposed to be the dominant species on the planet for long. We were always supposed to give birth to a creature like Godzilla. Basically, as he explains it, we were just warming up the planet for Godzilla. And that's what he sets up. The rest of the movie to follow will follow in those footsteps. We'll jump to Haruo because of course he has a lot going on with him. He doesn't actually have as much going on with him as Mepfis, but Haruo, the way we foreshadow his sacrifice through the character is, we see the guy's depressed. He is not well adjusted to what's happening. In City on the Edge of Battle, he has this moment where he confesses to Mepfis that he's feeling lost and he just, he's lost his way. Now that Godzilla Earth has appeared, he, he just, he can't do it anymore. Just after that, he has a little conversation with Metfees and he comes to it. He realizes, he finds his path and he goes down and has a conversation with Yuko about it. And then Yuko dies and then his plan fails. And then Mechagodzilla City is destroyed. And then he has to watch Godzilla become victorious again. He's dealing with the grief of his friends, the grief of his loved one, the grief of everything that's happened recently. He's dealing with the fact that he has lost two battles to Godzilla who has become victorious now and there's really no way to beat him. He is dealing with so much in this movie that it makes sense that he'd be depressed. He's also deep in mourning for Yuko specifically. We see him mourning her multiple times in the movie just sitting down talking to her dead body. Haruo again tells Metfees that he feels lost but this time Metfees doesn't comfort him. Metfees doesn't reassure him. Metfees taunts him and basically says, well, yeah, but you're gonna die because I want you to. It's not a very happy, pleasant conversation for Haruo. And that leads us into Metfees. Metfees ruins Haruo. Metfees is the reason Haruo kills himself. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Metfees corrupts Haruo's mind. By taking Haruo back to every point in his life that he's felt this crippling depression, this overwhelming sense of loss, Metfees breaks him down. And Metfees is doing this intentionally because he's hoping that Haruo will sacrifice himself for Ghidorah. He's hoping that when Haruo dies, he will praise Ghidorah. That way, Ghidorah will have divinity in our planet. That's kind of what he says, right? He will become a divine creature in our planet. Of course, that doesn't actually happen, but still, the seeds of what comes are set up here. Now, Haruo has basically been through every horrible event in his life, and he's relived it, 
He's, he's broken. He is a broken person by the end of the movie. Also, Metfees teaches how to a lot about civilization that they are they are some mighty big pills to swallow, as Negan might say. Metfees teaches how to the same thing that Martin taught us in the beginning of the movie. Civilization only exists to reach one ultimate conclusion. Advancement will only go so far before it will kill any species. Metfees explains that fear and desperation lead to hatred. Hatred leads to mutually assured destruction. Haro learns from and accepts Metfi's warnings that civilization is just here to be destroyed. He also learns that fear creates a monster, the hatred of that creature creates a hero, and the hero's prayer, or death, makes a god. Also, finally, during Mephi's death, Mephi's explains to Haruo that his hatred for Godzilla is only fueling Ghidorah further. It's fueling Ghidorah from beyond the void. Ghidorah will always be watching, and he will always see Haruo as a hateful spirit. From what the anime presents, there are a set of truths to the world. Taking Metfi's lessons as mostly true, remember that he has been proven wrong before, it would seem that advancement is a part of any new civilization. We'll get back to that. They advance to a point where creatures are created. These creatures will kill all life. The hatred for those creatures will turn them into monsters. It seems that this only happens when people act with arrogance. As we see, the Hautua are still living and they are thriving in a post-Godzilla world, meaning that they have not given into this arrogance. And Mephis has been proven wrong about the Hautua before. His first prediction is that monsters have killed all life on Earth, but the Hautua still remain. He then predicts that the Hautua are unintelligent creatures, when they are just as smart as humans. They even have telepathy on a level that the Exif have. This suggests that Mephi's conclusion that a civilization will advance to the point of destruction isn't always true. It's only true for new civilizations, such as humanity. As seen with old civilizations like the Hautua, which have come from the death of humanity, they have found a way to live in peace with nature without advancing too far. The creatures that are born out of the civilization's arrogance are only a part of nature, as Martin has explained to us. They are simply the following act to civilization. They are nothing more, nothing less. Humanity lays down their weapons and accepts the peaceful life of the Hautua. Some time passes, I, I don't really know how much, and shows that humans have slowly integrated into the Hautua society. Humanity is learning to coexist with nature, but two things are left standing in the way of that. Martin learns how to activate the nanometal and realizes that because of its self-replication, he can produce full-size cities. He can recreate a pre-Godzilla civilization using nanometal. In fact, it will be even more advanced than a pre-Godzilla civilization. And he can do that with the vulture that runs on nuclear power, meaning that this new society will be 100% nuclear powered, and as we know, Nuclear power is what created Godzilla in the first place. This revelation forces Haruo to relapse into the world of Ghidorah, where he learns that these advancements will create a new monster. This monster will be very similar to the one that Haruo himself prevented from taking form in Mechagodzilla City by destroying the city in City on the Edge of Battle. This monster will be hated, and a hero will eventually bow down and pray to the Golden End as a way to stop it. This will allow Ghidorah back into their dimension where he will annihilate all life. The nanometal in the vulture needs Yuko's body to survive. This is because Yuko's body is part nanometal, and it is the only nanometal left on Earth that is still active. So in order to prevent the world from becoming corrupted by these harmful advances in technology, Haruo realizes that the nanometal needs to go. Haruo's final conversation with Miana solidifies his fate. He learns that the Hautua are afraid of Godzilla, just like he is. But the most important thing he learns is that they don't hate Godzilla. None of the Hautua can even conceptualize hatred because they are content with their lives. They can't hate Godzilla because he is all they've ever known. If Haruo stays, his hatred for Godzilla will rub off on the others. Martin has already accepted Godzilla as the true ruler of Earth, and the other humans have seemingly agreed with Martin, or at least they've come to the same conclusions. So that means Haruo is the last one left standing that truly hates Godzilla. And if he doesn't go, that will change. Others will hate Godzilla, and Ghidorah will become stronger until one day someone decides to bring him forth and bring an end to life. Haruo learns that the only way to protect humanity from killing themselves is to kill himself and destroy the nanometal in the process. If the nanometal is gone, 
then humanity can't advance to the point of destruction. And if he is dead, then humanity can't learn to hate Godzilla and force those advancements into their society. In the end, Godzilla is seen as a part of nature. He is an unstoppable force that simply exists. And we see, when he's left alone, all he does is sleep. He only attacks when aggravated. The shot of Godzilla in the end shows a different world than the one we saw in Monster Planet and City on the Edge of Battle. This planet is clearer and sunnier. There are normal clouds in the sky, not some sort of monster pollen. This is no longer a monster planet. This is simply nature's world. Haruo's ending dialogue states that humanity's hatred and anger for Godzilla will die with him. When he dies, Godzilla will no longer be a monster. The hatred that makes Godzilla a monster will die with Haruo, meaning Ghidorah can never win. When Haruo tells Godzilla to burn everything down without any traces, he's asking for Godzilla to make sure that, that the hatred and nanometal are completely destroyed in the blast so that humanity won't learn to kill itself. Haruo's last words are for Godzilla to rid us of the curses of the past. He is referring to the cycle of destruction that exists, the cycle that Mephis had explained to him, the cycle of a civilization advancing only to fall. Godzilla answers these calls with one shot from the atomic breath. This fatal blow offers Haruo his only true moment of pride in the whole trilogy as he sits back and smiles with relief. Haruo understands that this one act will change everything. Also, no, uh, by the way, Godzilla doesn't blow up in the end. He's not actually dead here. The vulture does explode when it initially is shot down, but the components are what explode against Godzilla's skin. That's what consumes Godzilla in a fireball. I've seen some confusion about that online. Godzilla's not dead. That'd be kind of counterproductive to the message of the movie. The last shot of the movie shows us a look at the spring flowers blooming. This is a reference to earlier in the movie when we learned that the name Haruo is a reference to the spring that will come even after the coldest of winters. Life will always bloom just around the corner. Humanity's 20 year winter is over. Godzilla's 20,000 year reign has ended. Humanity can now live with Godzilla and Godzilla can now exist. The post credit scene takes place a few years after Haruo's death. We don't know exactly how many, but we do see that the Hautua are still living a peaceful life, meaning that Martin has understood Haruo's lessons and has not advanced society beyond repair. An older Mayana sits and watches some children pray to the wrathful one. They are not praying to Mothra though. They are praying to Haruo, who they realize is their true savior. He is called the Wrathful One, not because he deals wrath upon the Hautua, but because he has spared them from the feelings of wrath and vengeance towards Godzilla. The statue is a statue of the vulture, the thing that symbolized humanity's salvation in its destruction. Also, I'm fairly confident that little black-haired child sitting next to the altar is Haruo's son, but I'm not sure on that. Initially, when I watched this ending, I was very unconvinced on it. I didn't really like it, but over time it has grown on me, and I really do think it wraps up the trilogy very nicely. At first, I thought they were praying to an altar similar to the one Metbees had. I thought they were turning into XF cult members, which I thought, well, that just blows it, right? How do we kill themselves for nothing? That's ridiculous. As time went on, I realized that is not what we're actually witnessing in the ending, and I am much happier with what we do get in the end than what I thought we were going to get. Let me know what you guys think of the ending down below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. D-Man, out.